Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Damien. And I'm Paul. We're the Nomadic 90s. And we're driving 10,000 miles from Limerick to Mongolia for Temple Street Children's Hospital. This is our first video installment into our preparation for our adventure to Limerick to Mongolia. For donation or sponsorship, please visit limericktomongolia2013.com or find us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for any fundraising events on our Facebook page and here's some shots that we did today. We're trying to raise as much money as possible for the neurosurgical unit in Tempest Street. We saw the potential from the, the Mongol rally which started in 2004 and we thought we'd like to do something similar. We wanted to do something to help and something that would challenge us and something that hasn't been particularly done before by many people. We're attempting to drive 10,000 miles on 88cc engines. I'd be lying if I said it would be a breeze, um, particularly some areas such as in um, eastern Tajikistan, up in the Pamir Highway. That's going to be particularly, probably the biggest challenge we're going to face. It's going to be 4,000, 5,000 metres above sea level, freezing cold, below zero. And uh, yeah, the bikes won't be, much, won't, be, won't be able to go much more than 10 miles, 20 miles an hour, I'd say. I got my bike licence in uh, December of 2012, only two months ago. And I picked up the bike in November 2012 and I was asked to go on this trip in September. Uh, no, no, no experience whatsoever on a motorbike. Um, today was my first day ever driving it on a motorway and it was an interesting experience. If I, if I don't make it back uh, for un unfortunate reasons, uh, I'd like everyone to know that I'm in a good place. <laughs> and David, keep your stuff. Yeah, David, you can keep all my stuff. driving license in January this year so I have it about three weeks now um, I got my bike just before Christmas so never driven a motorbike before now it was always a car so new to the motorbike it's a good experience I tried to drive from Galway to Clare and broke down after about 40 miles <laughs> so <laughs> we're hoping 10,000 miles is gonna work I know it was only a flat tire so it doesn't count as a breakdown so I'm, um, I'm looking after mechanics on the trip, so I'm looking after the general health of the bikes, which is going to be a challenge carrying the three of us across, uh, across Europe and Asia. We expect that Damo will be travelling behind both myself and Aaron on the trip. <laughs> we will have to... I have heard actually that Russian bears can run at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> so 
we just have to drive faster than the last man on the trip. With the three of us, we'll have different responsibilities on the trip. Um, everyone's fairly competent with the navigation skills, I think. And at this stage, Dame was looking at Aaron funny right now. Um, and also, again, looking after the bikes um, as we go across. We we'll spend a lot of time on the bikes, doing a lot of Honda runs around the country, uh, just to wear them in, really, and see if there any, um, see if there any problems with them. Uh, my own bike, the first week I had it, the tyre burst on it, so we had to change that. Um, I know on Damien's bike his brake cable was broken. Uh, I think Aaron's Touchwood now is the only one that hasn't had any issues yet. So the challenges we're going to have on the trip is it's going to be hard to plan in some countries. I know the main roads in Mongolia shift from year to year because there are a lot of mud tracks over there. So um, planning out petrol stops, food stops, that kind of thing is going to be a, a bit of a problem. Uh, I mean we'll have tents you know, for stock and we need to stop but the tanks on the bikes can only carry us about 100 miles. So we're going to need to be well prepared with you know, spare fuel and planning our petrol stops. Yeah, we have a three-man tent for the trip. I'm not sure my feelings on that yet. I may have to get myself a one-man. I just I like a bit of comfort, you know. My highlight of the trip is just, just the experiences along the way, you know, um, seeing different things around Mongolia. You know, parts of the world that I, we might, I might never be back to again. Um, I could do, have done a bit of travel before, but never anything like this. This is a real adventure, you know, as it's not something a lot of people tend to do. Um, I mean, the Rally Mongol goes from London every year, but a lot of people are using jeeps, cars, ambulances. We're the only nutters doing a Honda, doing it on 90cc bikes. So, uh, yeah, just some of the, the challenges we're going to hit along the way is going to be going to be a good experience. Missing hurling now for a few weeks is going to be a bit of a problem. We might have to bring, might be too much to bring a hurley or two in the car, or in, not in the car, in the, on, the, on the bike. So uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to cope with that. We might bring a rugby ball or something to keep us entertained. Not that we're going to get much time to use it. It's a good adventure, really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good buzz, good experience. Doing it because we want to raise money for Temple Street Children's Hospital. We want to uh, help out the neurosurgical unit there, St. Gabriel's because my nephew was there last year and he was treated very well. They could do it to any money that they can get, they could do it. Um, for helping out with facilities and helping out the nurses, that were great to him. So as much as we can raise for that, and we're also gonna raise maybe a thousand, maybe 1,500 euro if we can, a bit of money for a school project in Mongolia as well. It's done a good bit of charity work before. Um, myself and a, f a friend, David Morrissey, we set up Edakis in Africa a couple of years ago. We when our aim was to buy school books for schools in Africa after I'd been there building houses. And then a year and a half, uh, yeah, a year and a half ago now, summer of 2011, I drove a motorbike from Limerick City, there's a general team, all the way to Cape Coast in Ghana. So it was about 13 and a half, 14,000 miles. Well, Mongolia is somewhere that um, you might hear in a story and think that it's a million, million miles away or whatever. So it was somewhere that maybe was going to be a really hard challenge, something that seemed inconceivable when you hear it the first time, as m many people have said to us already. And it's just a really big challenge. And I thought maybe doing it on a big motorbike or doing it in a car would be a good challenge, but we've decided to do it on a hand in the 90s, which would be a really, really bit tough challenge. And it's something that I think it's one of those activities that if you do it, you really feel that you could do anything then after that. So it's going to be a real tough challenge. The biggest limitation really is the vehicle that we've decided to take. Like, I mean, it's, as you can see, it's 90 cc's less um, for a man my size, which is just above average, I would say. Right? <laughs> um, it will only go 55 miles an hour, maybe, and that's on a good day, like today. Talking about going up the Pamir Highway, which is like 25 degree slope on stones and mud. We're talking like 10 miles an hour, so if we, we'll be seeing cars and jeeps flying past us at, at stations like that, I think the frustration of that would be very, very limiting. So it's the limitations of the bike itself, the terrain that we're going to be on, and our own time limits to get back for work and other commitments that we have. I think that's going to be very, very tough. But it's just that really it doesn't really matter because if you go up to Temple Street and you see what the children there go through, that's a doddle. So I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, won't be complaining about it. I just think it's something that we can really easily get over compared to what some of the other kids 
have had to go through and what I've seen them go through. So I think that's something that I'd enjoy, the limitations. We put them on ourselves as well, which is good. Uh, I think my role within the team this year is going to be um, the navigation side of things. Um, I'm a geography school teacher, so I should be able to figure out maps. We're not going to use GPSs or any tra tracking devices to aid our navigation, so it's all going to be maps, it's going to be setting out routes in the day, how far we think we can get in the day, what's realistic to do with the bikes, um, small tanks, things like that, time for lunches and stuff. So figuring out things like that and general dog's body. Any messages for people back home if anything goes wrong in the trip, what would they be? I just don't touch my stuff. Uh, come back and haunt you. Just don't go near any of my things. I have my books and stuff, but put them back where they were. And just don't take my style and my coolness and stuff. That's all.